I'd like to start with Dee Dee. Hello, Dee Dee. Hello. Hi. So your friend Frances McDormand, also in the film, producing partner, she bought the rights to Miriam's book. And she has said that in her first meeting with you, you were so prepared that you brought diagrams. And I'd love to know what was in those diagrams <laughs> and what did you talk about in that meeting that, that made you feel like, yes, we are, we are going to make this film? She's such a snitch. <laughs> um, I, uh, I drew the colony and all the stories of the colony and made sketches of all the, I don't know why. <laughs> I just loved it and I, and I felt like I needed to um, animate it. And so I taped all these pages from my journal together and made this big sheet of paper and just drew the entire thing. Um, and I just found it the other day because I gave my daughter the book. Um, sorry, what was the question? Well, I was just wondering, first of all, what was in the diagrams, which you just that. answered. <laughs> and what did you walk away with as a shared vision after that conversation with Fran? Because this isn't the easiest story to bring to the screen and make it compelling and watchable, mm -hmm. and not a chamber piece of theater, but something made for cinema. So what, what had the two of you agreed on that, that aggrandized you to really push forward? I, I never questioned that it could be cinematic. I think it's visually cinematic, but I also think it's structurally cinematic. Like, I know how it ends, I know what incites it, I know, I know how to map it, you know? Um, I think we just thought, let's shoot for the moon and try. Uh, I didn't see why not to try. I figured, like, if 12 angry men can do it, so can eight women. <laughs> um, ben, amazing work, as always. Um, the lone male among so many incredible women, and what an honor I'm sure that was. In, in researching the book, I was interested to know that August is actually the narrator in the book. Your character is the narrator, which is a pretty big shift, and I'm glad you made that shift. I think it was very smart. As, as a male artist who's worked in film, television, theater, how did it feel for you to be in the presence of all of these women and tell this story, and how did it change you as an artist? It felt amazing, and it was just a joy. Um, it was very, it's sort of hard to describe, but it was, um, I experienced it as very, there, w there was no competition going on or, it wasn't complicated, it was straightforward and it was gentle and it was focused and it was, um, funny and, um, <laughs> So it was, it was really a privilege. I, 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 um, w I, was, I would call home to a girlfriend's home and was like, this is so crazy being, uh, and so crazy because it's so unusual, so rare to be in a, in a situation like being the only man in, uh, um, among so many women. And, um, and, and so, um, I don't know, I just was like, Basically, women are much better. Than men. <laughs> That's was, what I was, was waiting for was, you to was say, my but I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd always known, but um, but it was very much confirmed. That's amazing. And Hildur, another amazing piece of art from you. This and Tar in the same year, just really staggering, incredible. But obviously, she's not talking about Tar tonight. This so is don't you dare talking. <laughs> Um, I read something funny that Sarah has said about you, which is, quote, you are incapable of sentimentality, which I think is a really interesting thing to say about someone. And after scoring Sicario and Joker, I can sort of understand why she's saying those things, and for which you won an Oscar for Joker. So congratulations on that. Yes, amazing. And it's, it, for me, it seems the score in this film isn't so much about sentiment as it is about hopefulness. It's like this constant reminder that things aren't always gonna be this bad. It kind of comes in and there's a harbinger of good things to come. But then you also had the challenge in the flashbacks to call us back to those horrible moments with the bells, which is just so chilling. So tell me about the process of settling on that sort of binary approach and what experimentation you had to do along the way. Mm, yeah. Well, um, we had a bit of a back and forth to find the right, um, the right tone for the movie because I, th I think in like originally 
when I first, you know, I, when I when I first read the script and I and I um, and I researched uh, uh, what happened to these women, I was just so angry. <laughs> I was so angry and I was so sad that I just I literally got paralyzed for for a few days and I just I I just cried for for days and I was just like, how do I even begin to write music that 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 even begins to to touch on what these women went through, you know? And and I found it. Um, it was quite challenging for me in, uh, in the in the beginning, and um, and it's it's probably the the darkest story that I worked on, and I worked on some pretty dark shit. Um, Rooney, congratulations again! Another amazing performance. Um, I feel like so much hopefulness is embedded in your character, even as she's on the precipice of having a baby that was, you know, created out of the worst possible circumstances. And it's almost like she herself represents that doomsday or, and a call to prayer at the same time. There's something beautiful going on, but it's, it's very extreme. And she's so matter of fact, too. I love that about her. She's so practical, and she'll say things like, even the animals are safer in their homes than we are. But, and she says it with almost like a, a lightness, which is just so fascinating. And I'm wondering how much of this optimism and practicality that we see in her is resignation. And how did you play that emotion in preparing this character? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I've never thought about that. I don't know how much of it is resignation. That's not how I how I thought of it. Um, I think Ona is, you know, I think she's been an outsider in this community f for most of her life. She's different than everyone, um, and yet I think she. Um, even though she is sort of an outsider and a rebel in a sense, she has such a steadfast faith and such a love for these women and for her community, um, which is rare to be like an outsider and a rebel, but to still, you know, hold your community close in that way. And also what rebel means in that context. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> even just veering a little outside of the lines would earn her that title. Yeah, I think she's living her life in her own way, but um, for herself, not to make any sort of statement. I think she just has a, a, a really high level of consciousness um, and a lot of empathy and sensitivity and, and a great capacity um, to love because of, because of all those things. And I think she is really hopeful and... Um, yeah, and that blessings come sort of in unexpected ways, which I think is a dis difficult thing to process, but it's it's quite beautiful, and thank you for your work. And Claire, um, I read an interview that you gave during the early promotion cycle of the film at the festivals, and you, you said something really interesting, which is cautioning people to not see this movie through the lens of Me Too or sort of current our current movement reckoning, whatever it is that we're undergoing at the moment. And you said, quote, this story is basically as old as time and I couldn't agree with you more. And that made me think about religion and how much religion has fomented these types of structures that have hurt women over the years. And I'm wondering, do you think women can ever possibly be free in a system <laughs> like this? A system that has created the types of men who would then hurt them in such horrible ways. Do you think that exists for women within the confines of this belief system? God, I've got a hard question, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Glad you saved for me. Um, I don't know uh, is the answer. I don't live in a devoutly religious community. I am not devoutly religious myself. It was extraordinary to to research and and for a very small, tiny moment, live in a world where these women were in the process of separating religion and faith. Um, and separating their existence from what they knew to be their faith and their reality. I think Agatha in the movie is very good. And Ona is as well about separating those two things and helping the women to understand that there is a difference and that their, f their faith has been manipulated and used against them um, to it harm It almost them. seems like faith in each other and community. Yeah, and that they're, they're going in towards something where they can reimagine what that is for themselves. So I really don't know. I think freedom and the freedom of women and the freedom of any group of people that have been oppressed um, is something that I feel like is very much coming to a head now and we're realizing how deep-rooted those problems are. Um, and I just always want to 
you know, caution about against imagining that that's going to be a simple path. Um, not that I, you know, have any, you know, not that I know anything, but I just think that it, uh, then it can be washed away. Like the knowledge of something doesn't necessarily mean it's healed. I don't think. We don't have a ton of time tonight, obviously, so I'll close with Sarah. Um, and I just want to know how it feels for you to be on the other side of all of this creative female imagination, this active female imagination. And are you able to fully appreciate this effort that you have undertaken? I mean, because it was such a collective and such a collaborative effort, yes, I'm able to be um, just really, really great about the process in a way that I wouldn't if it was more, you know, the the act of a single vision. But it, I had so such amazing input at every stage, and so many people who brought all of themselves and their lived experience to the table. So I get to kind of appreciate and be grateful for all of that, which is amazing. But even, you know, I was just thinking even details like something that becomes memorable for somebody, like you you brought up Doomsday and a Call to Prayer, and you know, that's a line of voiceover, but that's actually the way Hilder described the bells when she sent them to me. That's a line from her about her score that ended up in the voiceover. So when I see the film, I'm able to kind of see all of our, all of these little tendrils of different people's um, thoughts and dreams in the film, and so you're sort of able to be proud of it in a different way than if it was just your voice, and that's been thrilling. And you created an environment where you, everyone knew that what they had to say was was welcomed and valued. It that's huge. Just this group created yeah. that. You know, it was like a community of people who all were able to step yeah, she back did. and make space. She did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She's Canadian. I know she doesn't like she to did. take credit for things, but well, that's very clear. And even just being backstage with you, so much laughter and joy. It's clear that you have a very special connection, and it shows. And thank you so much for making this movie. We really thank appreciate you so it. Much. Thank you for coming out tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. <laughs>